It's been driving me crazy, but I haven't had an update to my car since 2023.2.12, and I missed doing that video. That was February 8th, which was 70 days ago. Wow. From what I've seen in the last couple updates, we're fairly minor, but I want to cover some of those undocumented features in this video too. Well, today's update, 2023.12.1, is a big one, and I'm going to cover eight documented and eight undocumented changes for a total of 16. Let's get started. The first item on the list is text size. You can choose standard or large text size for the touchscreen. This is something that uh, people have been wanting for quite a while, and let's see what it looks like. Press Control, then Display, and then scroll down until you see text size. The sizes are standard and large, and it defaults to standard. Let's try out large. The screen has to reset. Now all the text on the screen should be large. Honestly, I had to do a back and forth to see. I think the update is a placeholder for more customization to be coming soon. Maybe even a slider with text size that can go from small to large and even have smaller or larger than we see here. I'll go back to standard to compare. And then I got both of them on the same screen at the same time and you can see that the large isn't really that much bigger. Next on the list is control search. Use the search function for quicker access to controls and settings. Go to controls, and then at the top you'll see the search bar, and enter the search term. Make changes directly from the result, or tap the link to jump to the panel in controls. I'll type the word break, and see what the results are. Next, I'll type in lock. And when you touch the panel, it will scroll down and show you the other options. This is a handy way to find something in the menus, and you have no idea which one it's located in. Next, we have points of interest. You can see photos and reviews when you select a point of interest or supercharger location on the map. First, I'll try my local supercharger. When I press the button, I see in the info window, it has the photos, and you can scroll through them. Now let me pick a point of interest. Uh, here's one, the local airport. Press the blue button, and then the same thing. You have photos here, and then right below that there are reviews. Next we have phone call controls. Control your phone calls from the steering wheel. Use the left scroll button to answer or decline incoming calls. And when you're on a call, use it to mute or unmute yourself or hang up. Press the left button to answer the call. Hello? Press the button left to mute the microphone. Press it again to unmute. All right, bye. bye. To hang up, press the button right. The fifth one is scroll wheel customization. Do more with the left scroll button on the steering wheel. You can adjust settings like brightness and acceleration mode or perform actions like toggling the camera app, opening the glove box, and saving dash cam footage. Long press on the left scroll button will bring up a list of functions and you can scroll through the list. To choose which function comes up by default, go to Controls, Display, and Scroll Wheel Function. Press the drop-down box and it lists nine choices. I chose Fan Speed for the HVAC since that's something I don't have a direct button for unless I go through the menu. After you make your selection, there's a button next to it that, when checked, will ask you what function you want to use. I left that off. Do a long press on the left scroll button for quick access.
You will notice that the controls for this function show up in the card area on the big screen. Press the button left to go to the menu. That will allow you to quickly change the function of the button. Press right to confirm. Or press left to exit. I think it's a pretty neat customization. I like it. Next up is gear chimes. A chime now sounds when you shift gears. Each of the four gear settings has a different sound. Take a listen. To toggle gear chimes, go to Controls, Safety, and then Gear Chimes. And then toggle on or off. We now have voice recognition language. British English is now available as a voice recognition language. To update your voice recognition language, go to Controls, Display, and Voice Recognition Language and choose an option from the list. The last documented feature is one that does not show up on my list. I'm not sure why, but it's called Get to Know Your Tesla. Learn basics like creating driver profiles using phone key and regenerative braking from the Get to Know Your Tesla educational experience within the new manual app. Each topic includes a visual and, if applicable, a link to the relevant feature. The manual app also provides easy access to your resources for learning much more about your Tesla, such as the on-screen owner's manual and online tutorial videos. And my car doesn't have the manual app, so hopefully it gets added at some point in the future. The first undocumented feature is Adjust Wiper Speed. You can now adjust the windshield wiper speed by using the scroll wheel on the steering wheel. First, press the button on the left stalk to activate the windshield wipers and have the controls appear on the screen. You can then tilt the scroll wheel left and right to cycle through the various speeds of the windshield wipers. Next we have App Drawer. All available options will now be displayed when you open the App Drawer. Previously options such as Defrost and Wipers Only showed up when you were customizing the launcher. There is now a Customize button at the top of the App Drawer as well. The third undocumented feature is New Labels. Tesla will now display a new badge next to the new features or options. This makes new features more noticeable when scrolling through the menus. The fourth undocumented feature is the charging screen. The charging menu in the car has been updated to remove the car visualization and make the charging slider larger. This really helps when adjusting the numbers uh, makes fine-tuning much easier. I happen to have an extended range battery pack. For those people with standard range cars, your slider will be different than the one shown here. Instead of the daily and trip, there will be just 100% as that is the suggested charging limit at the top. Next, we have reverse camera. While the vehicle is in reverse, the reverse camera will now remain on the screen at all times. Most apps will now be grayed out and temporarily unavailable while the vehicle is in reverse. This was a very common thing that if you had to change something in one of the menus and went back, the camera would not show up. So this makes it a lot easier when backing up and staying with the camera on. The sixth undocumented feature is the climate system warming up. In situations where the vehicle is waiting for the air in the HVAC system to warm up before turning on the fan, your vehicle will now display a warming up message above the cabin temperature. Sorry, I couldn't give an example of this because it's over 80 degrees today. Lucky number seven for undocumented features is the browser. The vehicle's browser has been updated. 
Tesla's browser was previously based on Chrome version 102, which was released in the summer of 2022. It is now based on a more recent release, version 109, which contains various bug fixes and support for newer web standards. And now for undocumented change number eight, which is the last change we're going to show today, is the tire pressure card. The car image on the tire pressure swipeable card on the lower left side of the screen in the Model 3 and Y has been updated. Instead of featuring the vehicle from a top-down perspective with the front and rear cut off, the visualization now displays the vehicle from a three-quarter view from behind. So in conclusion, after update withdrawal of 70 days, I finally got the 2023.12.1 update. Adding a few of the undocumented changes from the 2023.6 updates, I get a total of 8 documented and 8 undocumented changes for a total of 16. That's quite a lot, one of the biggest outside of the holiday updates. I must say, some of these are quite usable, including the larger text size, customizable left scroll wheel, and the controls search. And as usual, some of the undocumented ones are greatly appreciated too, especially the reverse camera staying on. Well, hopefully it will not be such a long wait for my next update video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.